This joyous morning, we journey to the tomb with Mary Magdalene and discover the stone is rolled away. An empty grave remains to prove our Savior lives. With joy, we discover that Christ Jesus has risen. Come, let us offer praise and thanks to God for fulfilling the resurrection promise. This is the good news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship God with Easter joy. Friends, let us pray together. Good and gracious God, through your Son you have bestowed the light of life upon all the world. Use this new light to fire our hearts and minds, kindling in us a holy desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ rising and to finally feast at the heavenly banquet through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our gospel reading this morning is taken from the gospel of John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been, laid, had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she went, bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the, to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us and mold us. Fill us and renew us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. John 20, verse 10. Then the disciples returned to their homes. 
That's what the two guys did today. And for those of you that have heard me preach Easter sermons in the past, you would hear me kind of criticize them a little bit for that and lift up the women in our church and women throughout Christian history, history who have been suppressed and oppressed and pushed aside for all the great things they've done. How Mary stood weeping at the tomb and Mary was the one that, one that went to share the other good news. Well, the other two guys, they returned to their homes. But today, they get their due. The disciples returned to their homes. There's no criticism of them offered after that for doing so in John. They're disciples, they remain disciples, and they become a large part of the spreading of the church, especially Peter in our faith tradition. They returned to their homes. I asked you this question on Good Friday, and I ask it to you again because we heard on Good Friday. If you didn't hear it in the words, under in between the words, I should say, that God is God and we are not. God is God of the dark and God is God of the light. God is God of the living and God is God of those in eternal life. He's there through birth and they're there through death. God is God and we are not. What a great relief to hear that. Especially for a pastor in this time, especially for a doctor in these times or a nurse or a hospital janitor or any one of a number of people working to help us through these times. God is God and we are not. We are called to do great things. We are called to love one another. We have a duty to do that for one another, especially those of us who claim Christian faith, who claim any faith at all, really. And, and some of the best work I've seen is done by people who say they have no faith. God is God and we are not. I'm going to say that a lot over the years. Easter Sunday reminds me of that. No human did anything to bring Jesus back to life. Jesus did the work on the cross, being both fully human and fully God. But on Saturday, nothing, nothing happened of real significance other than the very important significance of waiting and letting God be God. Perhaps they even gave up. Certainly they were hiding in fear and who can blame them? And then it happened. It happened. It happened without us doing a thing. Jesus rose again. Now friends, I'm not saying that this pandemic, that the coronavirus or any disease in the world will just magically disappear. I don't believe in that. I believe in medicine and science as truly gifts of God that we are to use to love one another and that there are things we need to do to handle that. I'm not talking about curing a coronavirus. I'm not making a God out of a disease. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God doing God's things. I'm talking about what Easter is about. It's not about the curing of a pandemic. It's about the risen Christ. It's about the guarantee of our eternal life, the promise of it. It's about conquering death and sin. That's what these days have been about. It's about new life, about eternal life about life when all hope seems to be lost. That God is God and through it all, we are not. What if the story ended with 2010? Then the disciples returned to their homes. What if? Of course, that ruins a lot of things for the church today. And it certainly does. That takes away the ideas of even... Uh, even Evangelicals, excuse me, the, and, and people like myself who believe the church should evangelize, that we should spread the good news, that we should share it with others. We are called to do that as well. But does it undo God's work, undo God's grace if we don't? Does it undo things? Just like I said in the Tenebrae service 
on Good Friday, that the work is done. God did the work. Jesus did the work. It's not ours to claim. It's not for us to be the messiahs of the world. We have one. Thank you, God. We have one. We are not it. We have only but to love God and love one another. So if the story ended there, if no one ever told the story again, wouldn't it still be the same? I don't know. I think it would in this time of my life. And you have to answer that question for yourself. But how would us not spreading the good news undo the good news? How would that undo the victory of Christ over death? I, I can't see how it would. The good news remains whether we stumble or fall or falter or sin or live lives of grace and love. Jesus still rose from the dead, no matter if we decide to wake up from our lives or not. That is such good news. I can almost feel a relief when I say it. That Jason Stump, Pastor Stump, doesn't have to have all the answers, doesn't have to fix all the problems. And Lord knows I would probably do more damage if I tried to. That God is God and we are not. I want to leave you with one other thing in all of this in our lives that we should remember today. And I'm going to soften it a little. And again, those who have heard me preach before have possibly heard this. I've been waiting to say it here at Zion Blue Mount, but it's one of my favorite quotes from a theologian ever. And one day I'm going to say it the way he actually said it. But I'll soften it a little bit today. His name is Stanley Hauerwas. I don't know that I agree with Stanley on everything. In fact, I can probably tell you I probably don't, but he's still Stanley Hauerwas. That's pretty significant. Stanley Hauerwas is Stanley Hauerwas. He's a very influential theologian in our times and has been for several decades. I was listening to a podcast one night on homebrewed Christianity, probably a year, maybe two years ago, and Stanley Hauerwas was the guest. And they were talking about some deep theological matter, almost a bit confusing for myself. I don't even remember what it was, but it's very complex. And I learned recently in a quote I've seen from a general, the commanding general of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, who is, by the way, they are doing amazing work in this world to help us through this pandemic, along with lots of other people. But the Army Corps of Engineers, whoa, way to go, doing great work. And the commanding general, and I apologize, he's a lieutenant general, I can't remember his last name now. He said something, and I'm paraphrasing here, that like the more complex our problems get, the less that we should look for answers in complex solutions. That we cannot fix a complicated problem with complex solutions. You have to fix a complicated problem with a simple solution. And so I think of Sauerwas again, who said in this complicated discussion, one simple thing. He said, hold on, kind of. I'm, I'm changing this a little, I'm sure. He said, let me put it to you this way. Jesus Christ is Lord and everything else is BS. Now, I changed that a little bit from the way Stanley said with his Texas accent. Jesus Christ is Lord and everything else is BS. Say that once in your head or maybe even out loud. Let's say it again. You can actually use the words there if it's appropriate in your home, but I won't do that. Jesus Christ is Lord and everything else is BS. Now, Stanley's not saying that other things are important, but he's saying what it boils down to for Christians in a Christocentric world is that Jesus is Lord. Go to Jesus. And so, friends, the news that I take from, from him is one that he is risen, that he is in the world, and we have him with us all the time. But we have him in our scriptures. 
And there's so much he teaches, but I go to those two commandments. If Jesus Christ is Lord, well, then what does my Lord tell me to do? My Lord tells me to love God and in doing so to love one another, to be kind to one another. That in order to love God, we must love one another. Not love with conditions that you must fit in like us. Not love only those who believe like us. Not love only those who, who vote like us. Not love only those who love like us. It's easy. And yet so very hard even for me at times. to get angry when people disagree with me. And I go back to that all the time. What does my Lord tell me to do? This Lord who for me covers my sin and conquers my death when it comes. I owe him that. I owe him to love God and to love you. And when I don't know how to do that, when I don't know what to say or what to do, let us all remember to say the words that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The tomb is empty, Christ has risen. Because the tomb is empty, as your journey in faith, may your life be full, your love be abundant, and your hope be eternal. Live this day and always for Christ, for Christ Jesus, because the risen Christ lives in you. Alleluia, Christ is risen.